Mm. I was woken up with a reminder of Texas whirlwind where I stood on a pew to help eight victims rescue a woman who was sold and the Smoky Mountains. Um, I'll start with the Smoky Mountains and the Texas whirlwind. One leads to the other. I went to the Smoky Mountains. The kids were like five and four or five and six. I think it's five and four. They were going up to the highest point in the East Coast, the Smoky Mountains. It's a long walk up, up a long steep hill. And uh, X, as usual, was ahead of me. And uh, I tell her to take Josh. It takes Josh because I put my hand on John's chest. It's beating out, beating his heart is beating too fast. It's uh, really fast, really hitting hard. So we uh, sit on a bench there till his heart calms down. We pray. I sit him on my neck, on my back. Tom, don't pee on me. <laughs> so we walk up there. I tell him back, and I have a stick to help me with my messed up leg to walk up there. So I was strong back then. And then, so we pass the X and Josh, and then we wait for them to get up there. And, then, and that's where the miracle is where um, I don't think he would have made it. That's where my premonition went to go was one of the kids would die uh, or both because she neglects their needs. Uh, their, everything is about her. So, And from there, went to visit my brother Steve in Texas. Um, and uh, we get there and you know, everything's pleasant and nice and then but he doesn't get up in the morning. So uh, we go to get food and come back. He still doesn't get up. Three, it's by the time it's three o'clock in the afternoon. Or, you know, uh, and uh, he wants us to go to these museums and different things. Uh, and he's still in bed. I'm like, Okay, um, we just come halfway across America to visit you from uh, East Tennessee to Canton, Texas. Um, we're leaving. What? Yeah, you don't want to see us. Come all this way. We're in a luxury resort. Waterfalls and pristine and uh, having a good time and comes outside as we're packing and uh, it's 98 degrees uh, hot there and it's 9 30 or the next morning or it's um, yeah it's 9 30 next morning and I raise my hands and I yell I can't take it and a clear blue sky Starts swirling and getting black and dark and bluish gray and different shades of gray and black. And um, it starts spreading out above me. It starts spreading out, spreading out. And on me only is a like um, 30 or 40 mile an hour wind on me only air conditioning, this air, cool, cold air, pushing on me. And he's shocked, look on his face. I, don't know, I point upstairs, me, me and the guy upstairs is connected. <laughs> and his lawn chairs are blowing, and he calls his son to N-word, and I told him, don't worry, and 
you're a soul. You can leave this place. You don't have to take this abuse. Uh, you'll be okay. And the wind continues on me ever I walk. The wind, I would knock over his lawn chairs, uh, uh, trash cans. Everywhere there's, I go, this, the wind is on me, but not on them. It's calm on them. They feel the temperature drop, but they don't uh, <coughs> experience the wind, except for what's coming off the ground, hitting me and going off the ground. And then on the radio, and then it said, um, never in the history of the weather in uh, Texas that the temperatures dropped 30, 35 degrees instantly. And uh, so we, we get out of there. We're driving towards uh, my mother's place in Oklahoma. And then we get past Fort Worth. Uh, we're on the east side of Dallas. When we get on the other side of Dallas, then the radio goes, uh, it's over, we're back to 98 degrees. And I turned to the X. Do you believe me now? It's a coincidence, she said. <laughs> oh, God. And then, uh, so we'll get out of there. And then, um, that was too, John's heart. He wouldn't have made it. And then the whirlwind temperature drop. And uh, the other one, I get my feelings. So I, we're in church. This is um, uh, at a later date. I used to go to church, uh, to a building. People are at the church. But anyway, I went to the building for like 18 years. But when I was there, there was lots of controversy and lots of pointing of fingers. And... Uh, drama and tra dramatic stuff uh, towards me because I'm not a womanizer, a drunk, or uh, what you call it, uh, smoke pot, or uh, what else? They did vandalism and all these people in the Bible study, these, these are the people uh, I had to deal with. Um, I'll tell you about that later. Uh, anyway, I stood on the pew. I I'm in the middle of church, like 106 people. I stand on the pew and I pronounce, I have done nothing wrong. And they all look at me. And then, <laughs> I don't know why I was asked, and I got the feeling stand on the pew to say, You have done nothing wrong. And then uh, one of the pastors sent me, says, oh, I need to see you in the office, like, like a school kid or something. Um, we didn't want to tell you, telling me what. Well, he, he said some horrific, heinous crime that I am unaware of. You, you have done no wrong. Uh, you are doing a great job, blah, blah, blah. I worked with the youth group kids, and this hit me like a brick. And I told him point blank, uh, I want an apology letter. I didn't want to tell you because we know how you get. Like, how do I get like that? Um, let me accuse you of heinous crime with your daughters and see how you like it. I says, I'm a virgin. And why are these people on the hunt for me? Because what are they doing? And then uh, I was exonerated and lifted up and... Uh, accusations and like what are you freaking serious uh yeah, anyway i said you you help people you don't f them <laughs> so that led to um eight victims come to me i asked them why you come to me i'm a man because we trust you So I got to go to these people's, some are young, some are adults. I got to go to these people's parents and tell them what happened to their kid. And the anger and the uh, lashing out was unbelievable. And they apologized. Like, they, they attacked me for the message. <laughs> I didn't do nothing. 
something happened five years before, three family friend, uh, um, I don't know, uh, a cousin, 11 and five, like, are you serious? And I have to endure all these stories. As a virgin, I cannot relate to what's happened to them. Just tell them that uh, they're still uh, holy and good. What was done to them uh, does not take away. They don't know love. That's not love. That's uh, hate, anger, and destruction. Uh, that you're still good in God's eyes. And there's a lot more stories in, in those and this. But that's how I was exonerated. I stood on the pew. I've done nothing wrong. Then I learned all this crap. Um, it's just unbelievable the, what people have in their head. And uh, God saved me from the ridicule and hatred. And, and I don't do those things these people do. And uh, I'm pure in heart, pure in mind. Do I do the right thing all the time? No. But when I find out I do wrong, I... I correct it. So, and then I got to rescue a woman that was um, in Cambodia or Laos. I can't remember what, what country there. And then uh, her mother get, get, let her go with her aunt so she can, uh, she has a, a job for her. And uh, unknown to her mother, uh, her mother's sister sells her into where she's chained. And then 10 to 50 dudes a night for years. And uh, I feel for this person. And through a nonprofit, I got this person uh, away to a Christian school, to a safe place. And I got, he's safe safe and then that's the last I heard of her but those are the stories part four uh, Texas whirlwind I stood on a pew I helped eight abused victims I rescued a woman who was sold in the Smoky Mountains where my son has beaten his heart out of his chest and uh, <laughs> this is it's the tip of the iceberg. I was supposed to be on that Dominate Morrow show. All this is in my head swirling. And I wake up and with, with this series, with this part four in my head. And I say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for uh, allowing me to remember. Because um, this is very difficult. Um, he, head heats up. There's a brain injury. I don't pray for healing for that. I've healed in many different things, but uh, I like uh, what I prayed for, and I, I am blessed, and I thank you for listening. Uh, help others, not just help family, or no, people are nice to you, just to help strangers. What good does it do you if you just help your people that love you? It says, read it in the Bible. Uh, take care.